Evening guys, how are we? I'm uh, just getting ready for, for live and I thought I might as well uh, do my little routine of getting my food and my water. Um, shut up computer. Um, uh, yeah, just get everything ready while you guys are all logging on and, uh, and so we can get started uh, with this big Q&A tonight. So it's going to be a really cool one which is on cardio. And the thing that's cool about cardio is that there's both like a yes and a no at the same time. So there are reasons for and reasons against. Uh, hey Nathan, how are you brother? Um, so yeah, so we're going to go over cardio, all things cardio, everything that you need to know about it, uh, why it's good, why it's bad, what it does do, what it doesn't do, the amounts, all that stuff. Um, we're going to cover all that and then yeah, go answer every single question that you have related to it. Um, hey Jess, how are you man? Um, so yeah, we're going to go, it's going to be deep tonight. Now, my voice is still husky and nice and sexy for you guys, which I'm, I'm sure you're glad about. Um, but yeah, if you can't understand me or you can't hear me, just let me know. Just leave a little comment um, and I'll, uh, I'll sort it out. Alrighty, tripod set, charger is set, Wi-Fi is set. We're almost all good to go. Hey Kelly, how are ya? Rightio. Let's do this. Alrighty, we're almost ready to go. How's that looking? Schmick? Yeah, Perla, nailed it. Alrighty, yeah, and by the way guys, people have been asking about the threads that I wear. They're from Do You Even, so if you want uh, the link for them, let me know and I'll hook you all up. Alright, so next thing I've got to do is, as always, I have to share the link to the Shred community for you guys, for anyone who's not already on there. Although most of you guys, I think, are already on there. Um, we had 60 people come across last night, which is pretty epic, pretty special. Uh, 60 people who want to gain more. Um, so that's cool. So if you haven't already, if you haven't already uh, got amongst the Shred community, get into it. Um, because there's heaps of awesome stuff. We're posting there every single day, answering your questions, all that sort of stuff. And your questions go towards these Q&As. Um, righty, I'm just going to put up the link now. JCF, a shred community. By the way, for any of you who were like disappointed that I'm not going to go on my rant tonight um, about uh, people who do functional fitness, because as you know, I'm not a big fan of functional fitness for people who are going to sit in a fucking desk job all day. Um, yeah, I uh, we lost in basketball tonight, and when we lose in basketball, I'm never as happy. I'm a little bit grumpy. Um, I play social basketball for my cardio. And, and yeah, so that's, that's the reason we're not going to do it. So I'll save that rant for, a, uh, for another time, all right? But anyway, anyway, let's get into it uh, and let's go right away, all right? So <coughs> first things first, where's my water? First things first, guys. Cardio, all right? The main reason that we do cardio is to increase energy expenditure. The main thing, the main reason that it's good is because it burns calories, right? When you burn calories, that means that you increase your calorie deficit and then you start losing fat. One big misconception with cardio is that just because you're doing cardio, that means that you lose fat. So people will say, oh yeah, I can eat Maccas and shit every single day uh, and you know, just do a bit of cardio and I'm gonna be sweet. Well, no, it doesn't quite work that way. Yes, you'll be better off for doing the cardio, but you can't be just doing the cardio. Now, Brenton's just said, I play rugby. Could that be classed as a cardio session? Yeah, 100% it can. I do all my cardio as basketball. Another misconception about cardio is that cardio does not have to be you walking on a fucking treadmill every day. I tell all my clients to get off their hamster wheel. Stop wasting your time with that rubbish because... When you're doing cardio on the hamster wheel and you're just sitting there strolling over, strolling over, centimeter by centimeter, it's never fun, ever. Like, who, who ever, ever enjoys, uh, who, who ever enjoys doing cardio? Like, seriously, and nobody ever enjoys it. Unless there's a new season of South Park out or, or Orange is the New Black, which, mind you, is a fantastic, fantastic show, which my girlfriend got me onto. Like whoever does it, 
Who, who ever does, why would you ever do cardio when you can walk outside, you can play sport, play basketball, whatever? So don't get sucked into that stupid idea that you need to do cardio on the treadmill, okay, all the time. Because you just simply don't. You simply, simply don't need to do cardio on the treadmill. Get outside. Some coaches will specify that it must be done on the stepper because it burns more fat from your glutes. That's another thing. Is that doing localized cardio to one area doesn't burn more fat from your glutes. Like, just because you're stepping and using your glutes slightly more than what you would on an incline of incline treadmill or just walking outside or sprinting, doesn't mean that you're gonna lose more fat from your glutes and it's gonna get, you know, hugely, hugely tightened up. Yeah, you might get a small amount. If you're a competitor, sometimes if my competitors need to lose a little bit of fat, I do that just in case it helps. But for most people, like, no way. No way would you bother getting on the stepper because it's fucking hard. It sucks. It's not fun. You know, get outside, go for a run, play some sport, get active and be social. That's the next thing. So I actually completed a study a couple of years back now which showed that anybody who did cardio on the, on the fucking hamster wheel inside, they actually became more insulin resistant and more stressed. So they actually got less healthy for doing the cardio within, within reason. Uh, and then once they then went out, if you, if you go outside, the actual opposite happens. The other benefit about getting outside is that I'm a really, really big advocate for getting as much sun as you can, all right? So not getting burned, not being stupid, but like just going outside, doing your cardio outside. It is much, much better to do your cardio outside because you get the sunlight on, you feel good, you feel happy. I was outside training today with Abdel, uh, the squat doc. And he was like, man, you're so right. Like within 15 minutes of being out here, I'm actually that much happier. I feel that much better. There must be some sort of endorphin release. And I'm like, yeah, dude, 100%. Because you release serotonin when you experience sun and you release, uh, you get a much, much better uh, release of melatonin at night. Or, or, or so I've been told, okay? So get outside for your cardio as much as you can. Now, the next thing about cardio is that people say... But cardio, why would you do cardio when you could just watch your macros? This big, if it fits your macros crowd, which is around now in the bodybuilding scene, all these, these people that say, fuck cardio, just do weights, all right? They don't quite get it. They don't quite understand because life isn't just about lifting weights and macros. If you want to be healthy, which every single one of us do, if you want to look good, which every single one of us do, if you want to be lean, you need to look after your body as a whole. Now, one thing that I see all the time, like really, really regularly with a lot of people is that these people seem to have really poor lymphatic flow and, and how you can judge that, or so I've been taught how you can judge that, is that you can see these people will have little bits of uh, flaky, dry skin throughout their body. They have high levels of inflammation, high levels of brain, flo uh, brain fog. Uh, they get really, really waxy ears. Oh, weird, huh? Runny noses, they're constantly sinusy. They're always blocked up. They can never get it clear. Um, you know, they get tightness in their, pe in their pecs, particularly the left pec. Um, you get all these symptoms like this, and a really easy way to alleviate it is just by doing a little bit of cardio every single day, you know, or even just throughout the week, just doing a little bit of cardio. And so for most people who need it that come work with me, that's what I do. I just get them on 20 minutes of cardio just to clear their head because literally when you do the cardio, you clear your head. Now, Cuzzy's just uh, asked before, I got, I got Cuzzy, who's one person who I identified as having poor lymphatic flow, and, and I've got him on skipping every single day. And the reason it's hard, Cuzzy, is because you, you, number one, you're not fit enough to do it because skipping's bloody hard. Number two, you, your body's got to work extra hard to get that, that fluid pumping. And that's a really good thing, man. So if you are skipping, if, if you are having a hard time with your lymphatic flow, do something like skipping or play basketball or anything which involves jumping, and you'll actually feel a lot better. The biggest thing out of this is that not only will you look better by doing cardio this way, but you'll also feel a heap better. So the next time somebody tells you to say, yourselves, says, oh, fuck cardio, unless it's a joke, which I sometimes joke about because cardio can be shit when you're on the treadmill. Um, but um, next time somebody says it, it's like, like, what are you getting at? Like, seriously, because cardio is actually really, really good for you. Like, really, really good for you. That's what we're meant to do. We're meant to move. The next misconception about cardio is it doesn't make you fucking small. Like, it doesn't make you smaller at all. It doesn't just... It's not innately catabolic. Just because you walk... 30 meters down the street doesn't mean you're going to lose all your fucking muscle. Like, like seriously, well, why, why, why would you? Why would anybody think? That? I don't know. I don't know why that myth is perpetuated, but it doesn't make you small. 
In fact, doing cardio helps you get bigger because when you do cardio, you can perform better in your weight sessions, you know, because your blood's healthy, you're oxygenating, oxygen, uh, oxygenating your system much, much better. Your mitochondria, which are like the powerhouses, which give you all the energy and the drive, they're better. It actually helps with your neurotransmitters. Just doing a little bit of cardio to alleviate your stress in your brain and get all the flow better actually improves your neurotransmitters. It's almost like meditation. I was talking to one of my clients on who, who uh, who's taking my course at the moment on anti-aging, and uh, uh, Paul, and he was saying that his meditation is literally getting outside going for a walk and clearing his head. It's fantastic. It has exactly the same effect as meditation. So cardio is absolutely awesome for that and it actually improves your performance. It will make you better in the gym, all right? If you need it, that is. Okay, now these are all very general statements for the guys who are training with me just know that if you don't have it on your plan, there's a reason for it, all right? But cardio is in general very, very good. Now, Coming over to the other side, and the reason why I don't always have cardio, cardio in my plans is if you are doing too much cardio and if your body is too, in too much stress, then you're going to go backwards, all right? Cardio doesn't always push you forwards. It doesn't always push you forwards. In fact, often, if you use it incorrectly and stupidly, it goes back. So remember those five stresses that I talk to you guys about all the time, the emotional stress, the psychological stress, the physical stress, digestive, uh, and, the, and the sleep and rest stress? Well, if they're out of whack, okay, and you're not losing fat, and your body's very inflamed and very, very stressed, if you up cardio, you push your results down, and your results go down to shit, and it's not fun at all, okay? So yeah, for you guys who are, who are you, or you girls who are on the shred mill every day, grinding, 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 pushing out more cardio, aiming for another few kilometers, right? If you're not getting progress, cardio is not gonna be there for you. Cardio is good for people who are progressing or people who need a little bit of help with getting their blood flow a lot better, okay? Or perhaps enhancing their recovery. Cardio is not good for people who are already exercising three hours a day, massively overstressing themselves, not sleeping well at all. In fact, cardio is really highly detrimental for them. If you're in general, in general, if your cortisol levels are highly elevated, all right, and your stress is through the roof, if you add cardio in and you're not enjoying your cardio, it pushes that stress even further, all right? So you need to be really, really worried about that. That's where people who are doing comp preps and girls are on like 800 calories and doing shitloads of cardio and don't get leaner and guys who are you know, on the same on like 1500 calories doing shitloads of cardio and not getting leaner, that's why, because you're stressed. And when your body's stressed, it fucking holds on to it. It doesn't matter what you do, it will find out how to slow down your energy expenditure, slow down your fat loss, slow down your progress and make you look like shit. If you do more cardio, it can actually increase your water, all right? It can increase your water retention. Now, uh, one thing I, I did recently with, with Daniel Woods is I, um, I, I, I dropped down into his cardio. And he was like, fuck man, why are you doing that? I'm like, bro, just trust me, just trust me. Just take out your cardio for just a short amount of time. We can bring it back in if we need, but just take it out, all right? Bang, next minute, he's like, oh fuck, I just lost two kilos. Oh shit, I lost another kilo, all right? And so by manipulating cardio to suit yourself, you can actually massively improve how your results are and make sure that you go, you go a lot better. For example, another one of my boys, Chenny, the Asian freak, we really modulate his cardio, okay? Because if we get him to do too much cardio, he fucking hates cardio, he doesn't like it. Any sort of movement other than lifting heavy shit, hates it, absolutely hates it. His idea of cardio is six reps, okay? so. If I get him to do any cardio, he actually goes slightly backwards. So we can really hardly do any cardio with him at all because it doesn't help him at all. It doesn't really push him forward. All we've got to do with him is, is reduce it. So cardio needs to be used strategically. If it's overused at the wrong time, which most coaches do, you go backwards, all right? Most coaches think, all right, we want to get you leaner. All we're going to do now is just make you eat less and then make you, uh, and make you exercise more. And it's like, if you're doing cardio, it's probably not the best thing whatsoever. If you're not budging, if you just got really stagnant fat and you're trying to use cardio to lose that, what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna end up much, you're gonna look fatter. So you're gonna put on water, you're gonna put on fat. <coughs> you're not gonna have a good time at all, okay? 
And so I think I've pretty much covered up that. Oh, actually, you know what? We should cover hip versus steady state. Hmm. Good one. So with HIT, right? HIT is awesome. HIT cardio, high intensity intervals or interval training. Very good, very good, big fan. Now, when you do HIT, it's very stressful. So if you're already training really super hard and you're already really, really stressed, doing more HIT can push you over the edge. However, if you're like a type A personality, who's like go, 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 you do HIT, you'll feel better doing longer doing here than what you will doing steady state. So you can do 30 minutes of here and feel fine, do 20 minutes of steady state, you'll feel like absolute shit, okay? So you gotta be very, very mindful of that. However, at the same time, if you're a bit more of a chiller, a bit more relaxed, not uptight all the time, not on edge, you're not gonna fare as well on here as what you will on steady state. So you need to, need to, need to worry about that because uh, you know, the, the, the big thing, um, uh, with, uh, with, with with steady state and those types of people who are more relaxed is that you actually find it relaxing, you actually really, really enjoy it. So you gotta make sure that the cardio is balanced for you. Hit versus steady state, neither are better. They both have benefits, like very, very big benefits. Hit can actually be used to, to build muscle. I actually get some of my guys doing hit in the off season in order, order to build their legs while staying fit. Whereas steady state on the other hand, yeah, it's, uh, it's always got a place because it always improves blood flow and whatnot. So there's no hit versus steady state. They're both good in their own, uh, when used correctly for the right people. Okay, so let's get on to a few questions because I think we're going to call that now for the cardio thing. Um, now, Sam just said, so true, I was heaps sick. Then I started doing more cardio again and I've gotten heaps better. Well, there's your lymphatic system, my man, uh, working well for you right there. If you are getting crook all the time, you're always hay fevery. It's because you've got high levels of inflammation and yes, you, you're somewhere in your, your body, it's just not working at all. So you need to fix that. And by doing a little bit of cardio and moving your blood and making everything feel a bit, bit better and getting outside, you'll actually notice that your symptoms will drastically reduce. Currently, Will, one of the guys here that I'm looking after, he gets really hectic hay fever, like really, really hectic hay fever. And that's one thing we're gonna be working on with him. Uh, in order to reduce his hay fever and reduce all the, all the inflammation. We're gonna get him on a specific diet for it, we're gonna follow my anti-inflammatory protocol, and then we're gonna get him doing specific cardio in order to fix that. Um, <coughs> Jess has just said, boss, oh, I like that. I'll answer your question, Jess, if you call me boss. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a golden rule or guideline for when you can't do cardio? Um, when you have a respiratory virus, I, if it's chesty, then don't push yourself, etc. The reason I ask, I'm coughing lots, but want to train so bad, but don't want to prolong my sickness. Well, man, I'm actually, look, with that, my number one thing is that you shouldn't get sick. Um, and by the way, I'm not being a hypocrite right now. I'm not sick. My throat's actually just fucked from talking all the time. Um, but you shouldn't actually get sick in the first place. So we need to fix your health first. Um, but aside from that, uh, if you're getting a really chesty, chesty virus, then yes, go outside, get in some sun, all right, and do a light walk, but don't push yourself. Don't be doing 150 beats per minute, you know, or, or um, you know, 60%, 50% um, of your, yeah, 60% your max heart rate, 50, 50, 60% of your max heart rate. Don't do that. Keep it a little bit lower, okay? And just go for a chilled stroll outside. If you crook, some people can train through it, some people can't. Generally, head, head colds I find fine, chest colds I don't find fine. That, that, that's a rule, but it might be different. Um, in this one, I'm actually gonna hand you over to your doctor and be very responsible there and say, yeah, check with your doctor before performing any exercise, all right? Um, next one. Um, Sean Taylor. Um, that includes resisting tra resistance training too, though, if people are not getting enough rest in, though, correct? Uh, can you ask the full question, big fella? I've lost the context from that, and uh, I'll get back to it. Brenton, should I focus more on fasted cardio or post-workout? <clears throat> Good question, I didn't answer that. Should I focus more on fasted cardio or post-workout if you could only choose one at the moment? Doesn't matter, bro, either. Look, really, if you don't have a specific reasoning for it, in the end of the day, cardio is gonna be cardio, all right? Some people have specific reasonings for it, in which case, yes, but as a general rule, whatever, it doesn't matter, whatever you more enjoy. If you like getting up in the morning doing your cardio, which I do, then do it. If you like doing it post-workout, which I don't, do it, you know what I mean? It, it's really up to you. 
when I'm in the morning, I'm half asleep. I like going in my cardio because it's a really good way to start my day. I do it literally every single day. I get outside, go for a short walk. If you try and get me to get on the, you know, do some post-workout cardio, it fucking won't happen. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. I want to get home and eat straight away. So yeah. Eli, I want your food. Bro, we can't have it because it's my food. Sarah tried stealing my food last night. You should have seen the look that I gave her. Because um, you will never steal my food because it's my food. Mmm. Brenton, say hi to Latell for me. She's a little legend. Well, he's a little legend. He is. Latell, man. He's a little legend. Um, Nona, how are you, brother? Colin. Saw a doco on SBS uh, a while back that said men are better off doing exercise for fat loss faster, whereas women are better doing cardio fed. Thoughts? My thoughts are that SBS and the mainstream, I don't know if you call SBS mainstream media, but mainstream media are, are fucking idiots. Plain and simple. And uh, yeah, rarely do they ever come out with anything of substance. Now, my thing about this is that journalists, Excuse me. Journalists are not scientists. They don't actually know shit. In fact, I don't know a single journalist that lives, right? Doesn't happen ever. Well, maybe they do, but they're just hiding. Mainstream media will come out with any sort of bullshit they can in order to sell shit. That's what their role is. Their role is to make money and to entertain. They don't give a fuck about actually providing good information. Mm -hmm. Like, zero fucks. Because it's not their goal. In the end of the day, their goal is to put shit on the TV and keep you glued. Pe keep people like you and me glued to it, looking at the fucking idiot box, and then coming out dumber than what we were before, so that we're stupider next time. We think, oh, it would be a good idea to be TV. Because let's be honest, if we're all super intelligent all the time, we wouldn't watch the shit that they put on TV. I can tell you that right now. So yeah, no, mate, they're wrong. No difference whatsoever. But good question. Hmm. Graphy. If you hit training, do you usually advise around 15 to 20 minutes once a week, 9% maximum heart rate? Mate, I recommend with any training, fucking 100% maximum heart rate. Go as hard as you can all the time. If you're doing hit, man, and you've got 15 minutes and that's it, go hard. As far as the frequency of hit, I, I recommend you can go up to like 10 sessions a week, like really, just go up and you gotta find your own threshold and that's all to do with playing around with it and, and sorting all that stuff out. So you just gotta find your own threshold with, with the hit. Um, as for the duration, same thing, brother. Like, I normally guy, get my guys to go between 15 to 30 minutes. Some longer, some, yeah. Yeah, generally, actually, generally 10 to 30 minutes, somewhere in that range, depending on their goals, depending on, on their exercises and their training and all that crap. Um, but yeah, it really depends. It comes back to the same thing. If you're doing one set of hit, like five minutes, and then you're doing it every single day, that's fine, you'll probably get away with it. If you're doing 30 to 60 minutes of hit every single day, you're probably not gonna get away with it as much. So you gotta balance out your frequency, volume, and intensity, okay? So with your hit, my opinion, you should always be fucking balls to the wall. If you're looking to look good, you should always be balls to the wall with a hit. If you're looking for athletic performance, yes, that's slightly different, but I still think with your hit sessions, you know, go as hard as you can and have your recovery later. So yeah, I hope that answers your question, big fella. Mm. Daniel Morgan. Hi, mate. Brown, Basmati, or Jasmine Rice? Comparisons between the three. Um, brown tastes shit, basmati tastes good, jasmine tastes good. So don't do brown, because it tastes like fucking dog's balls. Not that I've ever had dog's balls, but I don't think that tastes nice. So yeah, neither, neither, neither are good, all right? Um, Peter, media never let the truth get in the way of a good story. No, they don't. Never. Never. Not a diet plan, lost weight, send. Um, I, don't, I don't know how to, how to help you out there, big man. But what if I could? Because i got no idea what you just said. Although I'm sure it was very, very valuable. Um, and we could all have benefited a lot from that, from that question. Okay. Now, 
I'm going to get into some of the Shred community questions. Where are we? Let me find it. Ah, I got one just before on keto and ketosis. Keto and ketosis. Okay, really, really good question. Right. Now, keto's keto's been in the media because there was like a a thirty minute session on it um, on SPS, like a whole heap talking about ketosis. And yes, ketosis is absolutely fantastic. So good question, Tibbets. No, it was on Triple J, sorry. Um, so going over keto. Um, so keto is fantastic. The keto diet is absolutely amazing. Um, uh, and the, th the thing with it is that if you, are, if you need keto, if you have a requirement for keto, if you are uh, somebody who's got an inflammatory illness, you've got autism, uh, autism I think it is, Autism, autism is helped by keto. What else is it? Epilepsy. If you have a need for the keto diet, it's fantastic. If you are, um, if you're highly inflamed throughout your body, yes, keto is fantastic. If you, if you're doing regular dieting and it's not working for you, uh, then it's yes, it's going to be fantastic. But if you're looking for optimal performance in the gym, it's not gonna be fantastic, okay? It's just straight up not gonna be fantastic. If you're busting your balls and you're trying to play a high level sport, it is not gonna be fantastic, no matter how fat adapted you are. Because for energy, for power, for strength, carbs are always king, all right? If you wanna grow faster, I find carbs are always king. Now the research goes against me on that and says that keto is actually better for muscle growth, but I don't find that, all right? What I find keto is best used for is keto is best used for dropping the inflammation and then doing a phase on muscle gain and then doing a phase on cutting after that because the keto allows you to become fat adapted, reduces your inflammation, improves your overall health and then you bulk, you get bigger, you increase your caloric intake, you increase your carb intake, you stay leaner because you're more fat adapted and metabolically flexible and then you cut down and you have a very, very easy cut. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good question, Tibbets. If you guys even want any more clarification on that, let me know. Uh, Daniel and Damien have just asked, what am I eating? So I've got a little bit of bok choy in here, which I won't eat in front of you guys because I have to like full chomp, chomp, chomp on that. It's a little bit gross. Or I could do it if you want me to, if you can excuse my manners. And then I've got some rice and then I've got some uh, pork mince made in some, I don't know what she's put in this, but it's epic, like legit. It's all bits of like, I don't know if you can see that, but it's amazing. I, I don't know, it's like a satay. It's kind of spicy, but it's not spicy. It's kind of sweet, but it's got no sugar. Who knows? Gemma, the mystery woman. For any of you who are in Sydney, it's with daily fuel, okay? So they're fantastic. Um, next question I've got here is from a man, Chance, and he's just asked, um, does cardio accelerate fat loss? So going over what we were talking about at the start of the evening is that cardio is there to burn calories. It, it, its primary function in fat loss is burning calories, okay? As for health, it will actually improve your lymphatic flow, which can make you look leaner. It can improve your blood flow, reduce your water, in, water retention, uh, and then it can um, also improve your performance in the gym because you've got a greater aerobic capacity, all right? So you can go harder for longer. However, on the flip side, if you're using cardio to speed up your fat loss because it's not going, then it's not going to be fun at all. And it's going to really, really screw with you and you're not going to have a good time. So yes, car cardio is uh, what duplicitous, I think is the word. Uh, and then it can go either way. It can either help you accelerate or it can slow down fat loss. All right, Daniel, what type of creatine do you take which is best? Uh, monohydrates, nice and cheap. I've taken several different types of creatines. Mm. Creatine, creatine orotate, um, triorotate, creatine trimolate, HCL, what's the other one? Ethyl ester, all of them. I've taken them all. And I honestly didn't notice any difference between any of them. And monohydrate's cheaper, so I just go with monohydrate. I can quite easily smash 20 grams of creatine a day with no side effects at all. And so should you be able to. And that's what will happen when you have a good gut. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, creatine is great. Just go for the cheapest one, El Cheapo, man. Don't get sucked into all this marketing. Like, 
people say like, oh, you know, you need to take it with carbs, so have this creatine, or you need to take it with this certain herb, so take it because it absorbs better, you get better absorption, and you know, more muscle volume, volumization, and shit like that. It's not true, it doesn't happen. Just take the stuff, take it with food, take it with aminos, you can get enough of an insulin spike there to drive into the cell, but I'm pretty sure the insulin can get driven into the cell anyway without the, uh, without the, the presence of aminos or glucose. Um, so yeah, so I wouldn't worry about that at all, man. Just go for the plain old cheap one. Take it before or after your workout or during if you like. I find it's best mixed with BCAAs, perhaps a little bit of dextrose. So yeah, that's my answer. Um, Paddy Garner, do you rate Max's Super Shred Protein Powder? Mm, just judging by the name, I'm probably not going to rate it. I've never seen it, don't know it, but anything that says Super Shred and Protein Powder, not really going to work. In the end of the day, the things that are going to make you super shred is training smart, looking after your digestive system, and watching over your nutrition, making sure your macros and your calories are all fine. Okay? Alright? In my opinion, Beta and HDL should be called Super Shred because I've seen, or apple cider vinegar, one of the two, because I've seen more people lose shitloads of fat and water from that than anything else, okay? If you fix the root cause of all fat gain and weight and, uh, and water gain, then you're going to look a whole heap better. Mitch Sellers has just asked, can you please explain dextrose and its purpose? Dextrose, number one, cheap as fuck. It's like $3 a kilo, okay? So very, very cheap, very easily digested. Um, you know, easy source of carbs, good way to get in your calories. When you start eating a shitload, okay, and, and, and a lot of my guys are eating a lot of food, it does get quite expensive, and that's a very easy way to keep the cost down. And also to get the food in without bloating and feeling distended and just getting over food. Also, it's really sweet, so it's pure sugar, so it tastes kind of nice, and it's a really good reward for around your workout. Mm. Neymar, I don't take no supplements, I train neat. What do you reckon? Good for you, brother. Keep going strong, lift hard, and eat well. Um, Brenton, almond milk with my protein shake, any good for my gut, bro? Yeah, sure. Look, guys, anything that doesn't damage your gut is generally pretty good for your gut, okay? So, if it's not negative, then yeah, it's positive. So yeah, if you don't get bloated, if you don't gas, if you don't burp, distension, anything like that, then it's gonna be fine, so you can go away, smash away. The one thing I find with protein shakes is that the the only one that I can actually take which has sucralose in it is Sabido, that's it. The rest of them are no good, and even with Sabido, it can be a bit dodgy from, from time to time. I've got some of my clients who, who can't use Sabido and I tell them not to use it. Um, but yeah, so we, with protein and most protein powders, the sucralose is the stuff which causes the bloating. So people who think that they're lactose in, or they're, they're whey intolerant, they can't have any whey, um, and the reason is it's actually because of the sucralose, the sweetener in there. So if you avoid that, you're generally gonna be fine. Um, Nixon, do you put much stock into meal plans in relation to body types, e.g. endomorph? Much stock, I'm not sure what you mean by stock. Yeah, not sure what you mean. But yeah, man, if you like, one thing that's really overestimated is that endomorphs and ectomorphs need to eat like hugely different types of foods because they don't. They just need to eat different calories. So with anyone, you just need to find out how many calories that they're um, that they're eating, and or how many how many they can maintain on. And if you want to grow, you bump it up. If you want to lose fat you reduce it. And that's, it's as simple as that, man, okay? Then from there on, if you're an endomorph, you generally have a slightly poorer gut microbiome than those who aren't. And if you're an ectomorph, then generally, you know, you're, you're slightly too excitatory dominant, you can't sit still, and you know, you can never, uh, you know, stop doing that. So yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it other than that. Um, I meant value. Do I put much of that? Yeah, sorry, Nixon, I got no idea what you're talking about, big, about big fella, as far as value, but I hope that, that my little long waffly answer then just helped. Um, Baz, how often should I train and duration to bulk? You should train as long as it takes in order to grow, uh, and you should, yeah, yeah, just train, just lift, brother. 
that's the big thing. As long as you lift and that's heavy and you're hurting, then good. Um, Russell, bro, not sure if you've answered before, but what are your thoughts around fasting with only water for one to three days for improving gut health? Cracker of a question, very good. Recently, I know a bloke, JP, Jordan Peters, who's just fasted for 10 days. I'm like, fuck that, why would you ever do it? But kudos to him for doing it. Um, but I don't feel that there's any evidence to suggest, and there's a lot of practice to suggest that it's not actually good. When we have, it, actually two answers to that. Number one, on this side, you got bad gut health, right? Really bad gut health, not going well for you. If your gut isn't functioning well, you're generally stressed. When you stop eating, your stress goes up. When your stress goes up, your, bore, your digestive system goes to shit, all right? Stops moving as well, stops working as well. So if you're doing a three-day fast or, and you've got a gut issue, then generally what happens is your gut goes to shit. So you feel amazing for the three days. You're like, oh my God, I feel so good in my stomach. It's really, really nice. It feels fantastic. My brain functions better. I can think clearly now. You know, I feel almost normal again. And then it comes around to that time when you have to bloody eat. And you eat, when you eat, you feel like crap. You actually get worse much, much faster, okay? So if you've got a gut issue, do not fast. Worst thing, I did it. I did a three-day fast, sucked. I did two weeks on dextrose, oil, and uh, what's it called, amino acids, sucked. Both times, my gut got worse afterwards because you're putting more stress onto the body. So when you have a gut issue, one thing that I do with my guys, I actually increase their calories, all right? Seems weird, but I do it. A lot of people come back to me and they're like freaking out. They're like, you know, eating so much. and like, oh, am I gonna put on weight? And I'm like, yeah, you'll put on weight because you're gonna have a bit more poo sitting there, but you're not gonna put on fat. Um, and so, yeah, so that's what you need to do with your gut issue. However, if you're fine and you want to fast for three days and your stress levels are great, fucking go for it. Enjoy it, okay? Fasting will be stressful and it will switch you into fight or flight, which is why you start thinking a lot better because your cognitive function goes up when you're in fight or flight. But as far as like, you know, damaging your gut or being good for your gut, 100%. So Jordan, the bloke who's done a 10 day fast, he was quite healthy, really balanced, really sound in mind, smart bloke switched on. He's going to be sweet. He's going to feel fantastic now because he's had a very good reset. He's had 10 days of autophagy, which means healing. When you fast, it switches on the healing mechanism and turns off the, uh, the uh, what we call proliferation, the, the rebuilding, the muscle gain mechanism, which is good for every now and then. Um, and that's fine. However, the regularity which you do fast, well, I wouldn't recommend it more than once a month. I've heard some PTs saying fast one day of every week. I'm like, you fucking stupid. Like really, one day of every week, you recommend fasting or having a slight fast for people who are trying to grow and gain muscle? No way. Once every few months, I reckon. For me, geez, I do it once every three months or so. That's it. That's enough. You don't need to do it any more than that. I don't see any benefit whatsoever. So yeah. Fasting is fantastic if used well and not used too much. So if you're healthy, you're not stressed, good, go for it once every month or two months or three months or whatever. If you're unhealthy, you've got a bad digestive system, you're stressed out of your nutter, never do it because it'll make you worse and it'll really, really screw you up. Okay, next one. Nicholas, thanks for these live videos, mate. Very informative and I keep it real. I hope to keep it real. I'm not very good at acting, so I can't be fake. Um, uh, next one, man deep. Um, I'm working six days a week and want to bulk uh, my muscles without fat. What can I eat and avoid eating? Eat food, avoid eating bad food. All right, cryptic answer, riddle me that, let me know how you go. Um, one thing you should probably do, big one, is, uh, is read the post that we put up. Because there are a heap out there. Hmm. Now I can just see that Ethan Windsor's uh, joined on, and uh, one thing that Ian and, uh, Ethan and I always talk about is nootropics, all right? And I got a really good question about nootropics the other day, and that was, uh, uh, it, w it was literally about um, alpha GPC and, and cognitive function. So guys, if you're feeling like your brain function slowed down, you're not quite, quite as quick as what you used to be, 
Alpha JP says your best friend. If you are, uh, you know, if you're trying to think as good as you can, and you're trying to, if you're studying or you've got a highly, you know, demanding, cognitively de demanding job, right? Constantly dealing with people, constantly thinking on your feet all the time. You'll actually benefit with, uh, um, uh, you'll actually benefit with just a slight amount of supplementation of alpha, alpha GPC. So you can take between 200 and 400 milligrams of alpha, alpha GPC uh, per day. And you'll actually notice that accumulatively over time, your function will be much better. So first, the alpha GPC will kick in after about uh, roughly 45 minutes or so, 45 to an hour and a half, and then bang, you'll notice that you'll actually start thinking a whole heap better. So for those of you who are studying, those of you who are thinking all the time, alpha GPC is gonna be absolutely fantastic for boosting your brain function and keeping you on top. Now, if you have brain fog, okay, you can't think, you can't remember, you've got low motivation, all those sorts of things, they're a different neuro neurotransmitter entirely, okay? Because that's not a cholinergic related run, that's uh, more of a, a GABA, serotonin, dopamine type thing. But if you just want to think a little bit better and your function's good but not as good as what it needs to be, then yeah, Alpha GPC is gonna be your best friend. Um, Dan Lane, what steps should I take? Got a stomach bug this week and my gut health this week has turned to shit despite following my plan spot on. Bugger, all right. Dan, we need to get you sorted, mate. So when you've got a stomach bug, the first thing that you need to do is bump up your apple cider vinegar and betaine HCL immediately. So get onto that big man. Uh, next thing is sleep more, much, much more. So try and sleep and rest up as much as you can. On top of this too, halve your training volume. So just drop it down in half until you are better. Keep going to the gym, keep moving and halve it. And then on top of that, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna find out the culprit for any irritation of your gut lining, okay? This could be prior existing because you know we haven't been working for long enough to completely fix the gut. Uh, I normally look for, for guys like you around, you know, 12, three month mark or so, that's when we can fix the, fix the gut completely. Some people take a little bit longer than that even still, um, but we need to, uh, yeah, we need to spend a little bit more time, invest a little bit more into that. So for now, big fella, what I want you to do, and for any of you guys who are getting stomach bugs, up your apple cider vinegar or your betaine HCL, sleep more, halve your training volume, and identify the culprit food and eliminate it from your diet. One thing that can often help is eliminating FODMAPs foods, and if that helps, then it shows that you've got a slight uh, intestinal issue which you need to fix up, okay? And you can contact me about that. Hope that helped, Dan. <coughs> Uh, Steve Gannon, g'day James, I'm doing Sober October and I'm supplementing Grog at night with a few cans of Diet Coke. Any dramas with that? Mate, Diet Coke over Grog any day, alright? Good on you for doing Sober October, my man. Uh, fantastic. Um, uh, yeah, no, there's not going to be no real dramas with that at all, big fella. No real dramas. If you get bloated, yeah, it's not great, but it's better than Grog. And uh, on top of that too, you can, probably sup you can probably switch it for something other than Diet Coke. Um, you know, man, you could actually, you, yeah, look, Diet Coke, Diet Coke's can be fine. Diet Coke, Coke Zero, same stuff. Um, I think Diet, Diet Coke tastes crap. I'd much prefer Coke Zero any day. Um, but yeah, uh, you, you'll be fine, man. And, and well done for Sober October. That's uh, really good, man. Um, now, Colin has just said, any tips on gaining extra weight on a bulk when the gains start slowing down, besides the obvious eating more? Uh, do a little bit of cardio, big fella. Do a little bit of cardio and see if you can push harder in the gym. On top, on top of this too, on top of this too, uh, the other thing that you can do is you take a deload week to so reduce your training volume and then bang, up it afterwards. Um, and what this does is it actually allows you to recover and to heal for your body to catch up and then you put more stress on it again. If you're plateauing, that means that your body is adapting to the stimulus that you're putting in front of it. So you need to take that stimulus away and put a new stimulus out there in front. Ways you can do it is, yeah, deloading, you can go transition into a short four week cut or so, uh, or so on. If you're getting fat, all right, and you're putting on extra weight, then you are gonna have a, have a tough time uh, putting on more, um, uh, uh, on more muscle because you'll become anabolically resistant, you'll become less insulin sensitive, your testosterone levels will lower, your estrogen levels will rise proportionately to your testosterone. So that estrogen to testosterone ratio will go out of whack. Your SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin, will go down, um, and then your inflammation will go up, meaning that your response to acute inflammation will go down. All right? So a lot of ups and downs there, I know, very, very complicated, 
a very complicated way of just saying, if you get too fat, your gains go to shit. Right? I hope that helped. That one's probably easy to say, isn't it? I'll just say that from now on. Uh, Shakira, how are you? Long time no speak. Um, hey, James. Controlled cheat meal before or after weight training. Pros and cons. Always after. Always. Always. Right? Now, the reason this is twofold. Number one, after you have a cheat meal, if you do it properly, you're going to feel sleepy as fuck. Right? So if you're if you're sleepy as and then you do and you go train weights, well you're not going to perform well, are you? But if you're dying, if you've been dieting your ass off, right, working your ass off, and you knew you have a cheat meal after training that you're looking for, how much harder are you going to work for it? You just got to push through that last workout to get it, burn more calories, gain more muscle, have a better session, more productive, feel awesome, and then after that session you get that reward of a cheat meal. So 100% after, 100%. Top of that too, if you have a cheat meal before training, you often actually distort your gut. So when your gut gets bloated, it puts everything out of alignment. You actually roll forwards like this, everything goes internally rotated, you sh your external rotation goes to shit. You hit your pelvis anteriorly, uh, you get an anterior pelvic tilt, and then you often get one side of your pelvis goes up as opposed to the other, okay? Mm. Dan Lane, the only thing that has changed is more carbs at night. Hmm. Are you digesting those carbs well? If you're digesting the carbs well, then they'll be fine. If you're not, let us know and we'll drop them out and up your fats. Petey, I just saw this comment come through then. Um, not sure if it was placebo effect um, or not, but this morning I took theocrine and theanine and found both my workout and teaching in the classrooms a lot sharper and could work with greater focus. Is it possible for the brain to become more tolerant to these two things and they become less effective on performance? Funnily enough, I had a debate about this with, with a bloke the other day, and, uh, and, and pretty much, mate, my opinion is no, it doesn't. Your performance just goes up. What you get used to is having high levels of performance. So it's like, it's called like the, uh, the, the God syndrome. So I'll take steroids as an example. People who take steroids, okay, when they're training, they feel like a god all the time. Actually, they just generally feel like fucking awesome. You, you ask anybody about it and how they feel, and they all say they all say that they feel fucking great. Right? Now, the thing is, if they came off and they went back to how they normally were, they'd say they feel like shit, even though they were still the same as what they were before the steroids because they've experienced it up here. Okay? Same as reasons why people get, get addicted to drugs, right? Because when they're on the drugs, they feel up here, then they come back down to normal like, oh, I can't talk to girls like I could on drugs, okay? Same thing. So, no, you won't adapt. Well, I don't see any reason, or out of everybody who I've got onto these things, I don't see any reason why you're, you'll get adapt and you'll go to a lower level, like you with caffeine, and you don't get desensitized to it. Um, but... Uh, uh, you will get used to being constantly up at that much, much higher level. Now, there's a bit of evidence to suggest um, that uh, uh, a bit of evidence to suggest that taking um, uh, these things can cause attenuation or tolerance, much like caffeine. And, and somebody actually pointed that out to me just the other day. Um, but I don't see any effect of it ever. So that's what the nerds say, and that's what science say, says. But I tell science to go eat a dick. Um, because, yeah, I, I say it in principle all the time, so it's fine. So that's another long-winded, duplicitous answer. Uh, but my big summary from that, mate, is that you'll get used to it being performing up here, so it'll feel normal, but you'll fucking know when you don't take it because you'll be back down here, all right? Um, now, Luke, on my plan, my carb intake is 130 grams per day. Will I build muscle on this intake? Yeah, 100% you will, bro. Why wouldn't you? All right? You, you will grow on, the, on this plan. And you'll gain and this. This weights program will be the hardest, most challenging weights program that you've ever done in your life by far. The diet program has sufficient protein intake to make you grow, um, and all that. So you're going to be absolutely fine, big man. You'll grow and you'll get leaner at the same time, which can happen, as per other night's conversation. Alrighty, well, look, guys, I might call it at that because my voice isn't doing too well, although it sounds sexy. So if you want any more questions answered, uh, we'll go for another five minutes or so. I'll answer all them, and then I'm gonna head off and I'm gonna go to bed. Mm. 
Delicious. Pairs Legends, you are, you are all champions for coming into these things. I really enjoy having you having you on board so I get to eat and drink and, and, and talk about lifting. There's one thing in life that I love talking about. It's fucking lifting, all right? And you are, you're all champions for talking about lifting with me. Mm. So yeah, once again, for those of you who just came on, we just had a surge of about 10 people. If you want to chat about anything, Comment up below now because I'm going to truff off in, the, in a couple of minutes. And then straight to bed. You know, I'll truff off, truff off after I finish eating this feed. So feel free to ask me anything until then. Mm. The other thing too that we should do is uh, what I want from you guys is tell me what else you want to chat about um, in the... Uh, uh, in the next videos, okay? No topics are off bound, uh, out of bounds. Uh, there's nothing that is uh, too balls deep for us to do, nothing too hardcore. Um, so we can chat, we can chat about literally anything. So when you're in the Shred community, uh, just pop up and um, uh, uh, pop up, shoot us a message and we do it. Um, Petey asks, what is the lowest body fat percentage you've gotten to, James, and how did you feel mentally during this time? I don't know what it was, but I was cock skin as fuck. And, uh, if you've ever seen a rooster's skin, that's why we call it cock skin, because it's very thin. Right? Trust me, it's the rooster's skin. Um, but yeah, no, I was very, very lean. I had veins literally going from my forehead uh, down to my abdomen. Um, I don't know what percentage I was. They couldn't pinch test me. I literally had, my skin was so thin that we couldn't pinch test. I actually had one pinch test me, um, measurement come up as negative, all right? So I was very, very lean. How did I feel at the time? Well, I fucking love looking in the mirror, I can tell you that, because I was shredded. Um, far as doing day-to-day -day, day -day tasks, not so great. Um, so when I was down at that level, when I was cutting, not so great. Um, for the last week or two, I probably would have been around the four percent mark, I, I dare say, um, or lower. Um, and the uh, uh, after that, I had like what we call a refeed for two weeks. Um, and so when I was on that refeed, I was eating a lot more calories, and I felt amazing on it. So it's not about when people say they get lean, they feel like shit. It's not because they're lean; it's because they're not eating much. If you're lean and you eat a lot of food, you feel great. Mm -hmm. Corey, I'm glad you love the vids, mate. I love having you on board. Luke, what's the brand of food you get in the containers? Uh, hmm. It's called Daily Fuel. Really, really delicious. Uh, big fan of them. They're based in uh, Balmain in Sydney. So if you want the link to them, big fella, although I'm not sure if they deliver to your area, um, just let me know. I'll do that. Um, Neymar, would your body get immune to eating the same food every day? No. No, it doesn't get immune to it. Actually, if you eat the same like type of food, like chicken or whatnot, then yeah, you will get an immune response so that you actually react badly to it. So if you ate chicken every day for two years, a lot of people get an immune response to it for whatever reason. If you haven't, no, that's incorrect. If you ate chicken every day for a year and you have a bad gut issue or you have something going wrong in your gut, then you get, a, get an immune response to it. Um, uh, so yeah, in that case, you will get an immune response. But as far as eating the same food, yes, your body will adapt to eating the same amount of calories and macronutrients, which is why you need to switch it up every four weeks. Mmm, Jamie, how many grams of protein, carbs, and fats should you have per day per kilo of body weight to help gain muscle but not get bloated? Depends from person to person, man. I've got guys who are getting bigger and getting leaner at the same time with 2,300 calories, right? Um, one of my boys, Daniel, absolute legend, he was, uh, he, he was doing exactly that. And he's grown and got, got leaner at the same time. 
Um, so his weight stayed exactly the same. He's just got a smaller waist now and everywhere else is bigger. Um, in general, I reckon, recommend about you know, really three grams per kilo of body weight. In general, up and down depends on the person, whole heap of variables. Um, but that's pretty good. Uh, with your fats, keep it to a minimum of 25, uh, really 15 to 20% of your daily intake. I often go a fair bit higher than that. And um, with your carbs, you just fill in the rest. Eat as many as you can without getting bloated. How are you, Gemma? Um, Russell. Back again while I ate my dinner. Ah, What are your thoughts around increasing carb intake throughout the day? Three meals during your bulk phase to maximize IGF-1 with the increased insulin. It doesn't really do much. Um, yeah, bro. With with your carbs, um, I can't see the full thing of that, for the full question for that for some reason. Pretty much, I don't advise having carbs all throughout the day. Um, I advise having more carbs just towards the end of your, end of your day. It's like backloading. Mm-hmm. Um, Laura. Did you have to cut a lot of carbs to get to that percentage? Um, I think I was still on 50 grams of carbs a day at that stage. So it wasn't too bad. No, 60, 60, 75, 75 grams of carbs a day. So it wasn't that bad. Um, and I was still having like three kilos of veggies a day. Or was it two? Two or three kilos of veggies a day, so a lot. Um, so not really. Mm, Jacob, just getting here 50 minutes in. Come on, mate. Mm-hmm. Don't miss out. It's good stuff. I'm not a bad guy to listen to. Sometimes. Sometimes I am bad. But I do appreciate you being here. What do you think about getting good at cardio to get a baseline level for fitness or lifting? I usually feel like shit after the gym. Yeah, man. Get into the cardio for your baseline levels 100%. That's what it's good for, is for increasing your, your capacity monthly. Kelly Satin, any strategies to cope with post-comp and not looking lean as you did on comp day? We'll look after you, Kelly. Let's chat tomorrow. Um, yes, we all get that. I still get it. Um, and pretty much what you've got to do is you've got to move on to your next goal. So you need to focus on getting bigger or growing or something else. Okay? And at the same time, you've got to re- re- recognize that you peak on that day. You will never look as good on that day until you next compete and peak again, right? Doesn't ever happen. Until you get, until you progress so much that your every single day is what you were like on comp day two years ago or three years ago, right? Um, but then by then you've forgotten comp day. Hmm, so yeah. Um, we'll chat about tomorrow, Kelly. All right. Jeremiah, I'm Matt, you're massive. Thank you, brother. I still feel skinny though, and I don't have sleep nap, sleep apnea yet, so I'm clearly not big enough. When I have sleep apnea, that and that is when I'll know that I'm truly big. All right, I'm out of food. I'm uh, I'm going to leave you all to it. I hope this helped you all. And yeah, if you want to chat about anything else, let us know. And for now, adios. Enjoy your night, and I'll speak to you soon.